Hello viewers, Super GT back on Gran Turismo. I'm going to bring you one really good race. I really enjoyed this race. So, here we are then in Italy around the Autodrome Lago Maggiore. There is the grid, ninth place on the grid. So, clearly, plenty of work to be done in this race if I want to get something resembling a respectable finishing position. So, then you can see here the car I've gone for. It is the Volkswagen Beetle. Now, it's clear in this, in this class at least that the German cars are very good, uh, especially the BMW and the Porsche. But we've gone for a different one here, so of course, the Volkswagen. So into the first corner, let's see how this one goes. And the guy behind is looking for a, for a move, give him the space, but then he gives, gives me a nice little punt through turn two. Yellow flag already, that is a Porsche, a German in a Porsche spinning out so a really bad start for him starting up towards the front and then already dropping down towards the back so it couldn't really get much worse for him now this track it's a really great circuit uh, Maggiore 3.6 miles in total length 17 turns a great variation of types of corners that you get this is a really tricky corner turn 5 I just go to the back of the BMW ahead and you can see they're losing lots of time trying to get that power down and struggling to do so. But so far, up into eighth, so so having a good good start so far. At least we haven't gone down at any positions, and or been on the receiving end of a nice nasty punt into turn one. So there's the group up ahead. You can see there are plenty of Porsches and BMWs. I did spot a Ford Mustang in there as well as we come up to the brilliantly cambered corner here. Amazing corner, that one. Really does feel good when you go through there. The uh, the angle of it kind of helps you through there. Then up the hill into 12 and 13, a fast sweeping S's section. We're just about to take that flat. Now this, this car, the Beetle. So th this is a car that I haven't been driven too much. I've driven the Porsche quite a lot, as the, the uh, Portuguese guy goes very wide here. I'll come back to the car in just a moment. I'm just going to try, or actually not quite, be able to go across him there. As he just settles into the position, is he going to? No, he's not. He's going to go up the inside. He's going deep, and I'm going to get the cut back on him. So then, fighting together for seventh position up the main straights, I'm going to show him how to do um, a nice move here. Actually, maybe not. He's going to show me how to do it. But not quite like that, mate. Um, that wasn't exactly the way to do it. Almost collects his fellow Iberian as he rejoins the circuit. So the Russian there um, gets his position back, but just with a massive time loss, I guess. So he won't be too happy, I suppose, losing the time. So ultimately, it was a wasted move. I think he was just trying to get ahead of me more than overtake the Russian. But um, he certainly did make his presence felt there. So down into turn five, a really difficult corner to get right. And you can see here, I've just run wide. Now this is the thing I was going to talk about, is uh, the Russian actually there goes very wide. Actually no, sorry, he's just lagged. He's, he's uh, appeared back ahead once again. Uh, so this car, you're always trying to work out the strengths and the weaknesses of the car as you go on in the race. I mean, I haven't driven this car very much at all. So just trying to work out what works, what doesn't. Now it seems that on the brakes, it really doesn't like to turn as well. So it's really hard to trail brake into the corners, which is why I struggled around turn five, because that is kind of like a curved entry so it's really really tricky to go into that corner in this car release that's my first analysis of it down the straight it seems okay you see I didn't really lose too much time to this BMW up ahead which seems to be the fastest car in this class uh, from what I can tell if not the Porsche but both are very quick and I wasn't losing too much time which is good to see and then coming out of turn 12 uh, sorry turn 13 to 14 um, you can see here, pretty much the same as it was in the previous lap. So we have the Russian just ahead of the Portuguese guy up ahead. And he uh, doesn't get the greatest of exits there through 16. Now down the hill, winding through down the left into 17. And another thing I will say is that the car doesn't quite have the... doesn't like to turn in too well. But we're going to go for a possible move. Perhaps show this Portuguese guy how it's done into the first corner on the brakes hit my mark and we're through so it's a very cleanly done move just waiting for that punt into turn two it doesn't happen so uh, yeah there we go up into seventh place 
So slow but steady progress. You can see there's 10 laps in this race. There's no real rush to get everything done straight away. And you can see through turn four, that's where I was struggling because that, that corner you kind of have to go in really early. It's a fairly misleading one. Um, it, you don't really always have to take the normal racing line of going out far to the left, swinging in, taking the apex. And through turn five, I'm going to get pushed wide. That isn't helping at all. And then as, I, as we come up the hill then towards the S's, I'm just going to try to res resume my position on the racing line. He's not really letting me do it, to be honest. And that isn't... Well, it's, it's annoying because we're both losing time. The more he pushes me through corners and doesn't let me take the racing line, the more, you know, the slower I'm going to go, and therefore the slower he's going to go because he's still behind me. So as a result of all that, we've just lost time simply. You see the Russian there has opened up a gap of over a second whereas it was definitely below a second before so this group isn't too far behind oh sorry isn't too far ahead you see just as we got the hill they are just a couple of seconds ahead so as we are only on lap three it certainly isn't over yet plenty of time to to do something about that about two minutes a lap just under 157s are the target if we can start getting 157s we are going very quickly indeed the beetle actually looks very sporty, very very fast actually. Quite a rapid looking little thing. A strange looking car, of course, the beetle. But um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Um, perhaps you're going to slay me in the comment section for that for that comment. Um, you see the Portuguese guy there running very wide. I ideally want to get away from him because he seems a bit aggressive. And if you start mixing yourself with someone like that, you're just going to start losing time. Into the first corner. I want to pull away, but then doing things like that I mean I won't. You can see he's actually popping into the bottom of the screen to say hi. So he's right back on me, which isn't good news because, again, as I said, he's just going to start going for little pot shots and moves, nudging me through corners, and then we're going to lose even more time to this group ahead. So I don't think this is completely impossible to catch up to this big group here. So there's one, two, three, four. Group of four up ahead, and then, of course, the Russian and then myself. So he goes for the move, hit up the inside, fair enough, but then he's going he's to get a poor exit as a result of going very deep on the way in. So back up into seventh. The leader at this point is, is long gone. I don't think there's really much chance of catching him, um, unless he really does something very stupid, or someone does something very stupid to him. You never know. So on to the back straight, winding through there. And as you can see the back there, not too far ahead again with the Russian just up ahead so it's, it's going to be one of those races where you've got to be very very patient and this is a good thing uh, when you're behind a big group normally a group slows each other down they almost always slow each other down never speed each other up unless they're bomb drafting or something or really working together in most cases they're going to be fighting going to be defending going to be uh, just hitting each other a little bit through corners um, just tiny bits of contact tiny bits here and there but it all adds up to a couple of attempts a lap. In fact you can kind of see that that group of four has now split and the top two have kind of pulled away in unison and then the second two have now dropped into the grasp of the Russian ahead. So that looks a bit more promising for us as we come out of the final corner to end lap four and now begin lap five. Now lap five is always a crucial one because at the end of lap 5 most people are going to go in for their pit stops so we do have to do one pit stop in the race and I think 90% of people opt to do it at the end of lap 5 which is exactly halfway through the race it kind of makes sense just to split your strategy exactly in the middle into turn 4 so the Russian now definitely right on the back of that battle so a lot of these a lot of, a lot of the time in these races I'm kind of a spectator to the battling which is going on ahead or behind which is often good. It's often not. Uh, it's often good to not be in it yourself, um, because you're you're going to be losing time. But of course, I do want to catch up and try and get through that battle, and then start catching up to the guys ahead. At the moment, it doesn't seem to be happening for me. Into the S's. So through there, the car is is planted. It's really stiff. Uh, uh, many of the cars are quite stiff. This one, uh, you can see that it's very. It's like it's on rails, but. The only issue with that is sometimes it doesn't turn as tight as you would like. So you do have to back off the throttle sometimes. So there is a downside to a car being stable in that it doesn't actually turn as well as you might like. Sometimes it's better to have a better turning angle 
and just try to manage the oversteer that you might get as a result. So then up the hill then, through the left of 12. It's a really good little section this one and it's, it's quite rewarding to take it flat out in this car. You can see they're just maximising the track width on the exit of 30. Up the hill into 14, the Mustang has been sent wide. I think that was a Mustang or it might have been a BMW. So he's been sent wide into the wall. And I resume sixth position. So at least I've gained a position there at the end of the fifth lap before we go into the pits for our stop. And I've just actually reeled in the uh, the Russian as we now sweep to the left to take the pit stop. There we go. So we're going to go for the hard tyres once again. I think it's, sens it's a sensible thing to do. Everyone's going for the same tyre. And of course, we just we need over five laps of fuel to make it to the end, of course. So really nice pit stop animation here on Gran Turismo. And there's our 5.2 laps worth of fuel. On the exit, I kind of go right to take the racing line, but then the uh, the Mustang there takes a really opportunistic pass. So he, he resumed the... Uh, the race right behind me so in fact I jumped him because he was just ahead as we went into the pit stops but then he uh, he immediately jumps me back to take fifth position back so I'm now in sixth place but I'm just looking at the the, lead, uh, the leaderboard the lead, lead leaderboard I don't know why I said that and you can see there that they, uh, the Portuguese guy is in the lead so he was behind us uh, so essentially once he goes into the pit stop I should be in fifth position and uh, the Mustang goes very wide. I think as a result of cold tyres, we both make quite a big mistake through there. The Porsche is just behind me, the Russian, so I've actually jumped him in the pit somehow. I think he may be putting too much fuel and had to sit there for too long. So I've actually jumped a couple of guys there. So that's actually, there's actually been a very good lap. So I was looking at the back of that battle for a good two, three laps, but then all of a sudden, I'm now kind of ahead of it. So that's that's been a very successful uh, lap number five and six. You see, just up ahead, um, a good, a good battle, a good scrap going on for third place. So that does, it bodes well. Once again, I'm always analysing what the guys up ahead are doing, uh, just trying to see if I'm gaining, and I'm constantly monitoring that gap on the left-hand side. So at the moment, to the the Brit up ahead, it's a uh, three and a half seconds. So not impossible to reel in. We've still got four laps to to go after this one. So we're looking, actually, it's down to three seconds now. So we're looking at about or less than a second a lap, and we should be on the back of them come the end of the race. So winding left, hitting the apex a lot nicer there. So you can see here, slowly getting used to the car. So we're going to go across the line here to start lap seven, which is going to be our fastest lap of the race. The fastest lap so far, you can see it there, the bottom, or sorry, the middle of the screen on the left, by the Frenchman who's in the lead. 157.6 so if we can get anywhere close to that we're doing well our fastest so far is 59.2 so a bit off maybe uh, a second and a half off of what the faster lap is so far so plenty of time to be gained so going through the first sector through there really really nicely sometimes it's better in this game I think to kind of just not push 100% you kind of just have to back off a tiny bit and just aim to be really smooth I think being really smooth does help so just really think about your throttle inputs, your brake inputs and your steering inputs, just really make sure that they're quite gentle just to make sure you don't upset the car at all and sometimes that way kind of just it makes you, I don't know, just kind of glide through the track and you really do kind of pick up a lot of speed that way so this lap so far has been really smooth so that gap to uh, now the Spaniard up ahead is uh, about two and a half seconds so I am gaining 1.1 seconds up on our previous best so there is um, a big big jump in uh, best lap time so far and I can still see that they are battling up ahead so we're going to constantly monitor that and still as I, as I come up the hill then the gap still just below three seconds so I haven't really gained too much I just need them to start battling even more and then I'll really be on I'll really be in with the chance of uh, probably reeling them in so 1.3 seconds up on our previous best so it's a good lap so far just it's just a shame though that the two guys ahead are also lapping very quickly. It seems as though they're not battling. In fact, there's no point in battling, really. If you're in second, guy, if you're that guy in second there, there's no point in, in defending really too much. If he goes past, you're, you're probably about the same speed. Just stick with him and start fighting out for the end. The more you battle, the more you, you bring someone else into the battle. 
So that was that lap, uh, faster lap so far, so 57.8, which is a very good lap so far. Now this is uh, lap number 9, we are just coming out of turn 4, so you can see the gap just over about a second, so definitely reeled these two guys in. So they've been battling really hard for the last couple of laps, and that's only slowed them down. So as I was saying, the more you fight, yeah it might seem good to keep the guy behind, but you're inviting someone else from way behind to kind of catch up and join the battle. So in a way there's a risk. You want to you want to defend that position. So this Britain second wants to, you know, keep second. It's very unlikely he's going to win the race, so second is all he can fight for. But then by doing so, uh, fourth place is now going to catch up, which is me. And let's see if I can uh, go for the move. Actually the Spaniard goes way over to the right hand side. The Brit kind of going very defensive. Is he going to have the, men the momentum and the run? Yes, he is. Into the banked corner. And he's through. So the Spaniard now into second place. Coming through here. Look at this battling. We're going to scan ahead. Look at this. So going through the S's side by side. The Brit on the inside. They make contact. He's pushed him into the wall. And th uh, the third player has entered the battle. Here we go. Player three has pressed start button to join the battle. And now, well, Battle Royale begins because we have one lap remaining. And I'll just go for a gap that wasn't there, so fair enough. I'll just back out to keep third position into the final corner. I just misjudged that completely. I just dinked left before the breaking point, and that messed me up. So just having to back off the throttle to avoid going on the grass. So that was a big shame. Up to third, but then back down to fourth. Can we do anything about that on this final lap? Hitting our break point there very nicely. Just going straight in towards the apex. No love lost between these two guys. It's like the Battle of Trafalgar all over again. As the Brit and the Spaniard go uh, hammer and tong up against each other. And in fact, there's two, Span uh, two Brits here up against the one lonely Spaniard. He's going for the move. Contact is made. These two guys have clearly had a very aggressive race up against each other. You see the gap there. Uh, opening up to the Mustang behind. No real worries about uh, losing our fourth position unless it really goes tits up. So up the hill, exit of five. A spot that the Mercedes there. It's actually a Mercedes, yeah. In third place, driven by the Brit. And into the S's. So again, yes, another uh, German car doing, doing very well in group three. Now you can actually, there's plenty of runoff there with the new layouts of Majora, so you can really extend that, the exit of that corner quite a lot. Uh, so of course, not dirty. You may have just spotted there. This is a big moment of the race. There is a back marker. This doesn't actually happen that often in this game, but there is a back marker up ahead, and he's going to play a big part here, I think, as we come up to the final sector of the race. The Brit up the inside of the Spaniard. Brutal move. And we have actually a British guy there in the, in the Citroen. Oh, so, sorry, actually, a Volkswagen, I think. Coming through the final couple of corners, how is this going to play play out? The Spaniard up the inside, into turn 14. He's got the move done. The Brit, the back marker, is going to start blocking everyone. But actually, the Spaniard up the inside. He leaves space for him. And coming through the exit here, it's going to be really close. Uh, the Brit on the right-hand side, I just go for the move. I think there was space that time. It didn't look very pretty at all. I'm up the inside of the back marker. Is he going to leave the space? Yes, he is just about. We've got a massive red text across the screen. Really annoying. He just made contact with me on the exit. Running up to the line. It's going to be really close. I'm just going to have the position. He goes for a nasty little swipe there across the line. Trying to wipe me out. And I just about keep third position. Actually, the Mercedes had the three-second penalty there at the end. So it wouldn't have mattered if he got back past me. But, wow. In the end, coming up from ninth into third place... So a gain of six overall. It was a really good battle, and it turned out that a Frenchman in a French car actually won the race. So of all these German cars on the grid, it turns out the French cars are the best after all that. So that was a really exciting race, I thought. Really, really good battle right to the end, right to the last corner, or the last metre of the race. But there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed, as always. Uh, do let me know your thoughts on that. And we'll see you next time. Uh, do smash the like button if you enjoyed. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.